do, do, do. I want to be the only one you run to. You come running. I want to be your lover. Boom, boom, boom. Love you all, tell you out. Oh, all my love will make you shout. Oh, 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 yeah. Y'all know about that prince. What's up? What's up? I know it's been a minute. This is uh, September 2nd. It was rolling quickly into the Labor Day holiday weekend. As I let that loud ass car roll on by me. Uh, so anyway, I think he's one his tires on flat. But anywho, man, and men and women, this is something I want to do really quickly before I get my run on this evening. Ooh, it's kind of humid out here too. Damn, I think I'll still make it. But anyway, I want to talk about two things really quickly. By the way, if y'all didn't know, I have a short story that I've been uh, that I wrote a few years ago. It's called "The Greatest Pain Ever Felt." It's the conversation with my absent biological father who never wanted to be found. And so check it out. It's only $10 cash app or PayPal. Do dollar sign Rico the Opinionist. Check out the description box in this video on this YouTube channel, Rico the Opinionist. As well as on this Facebook page that you that you may be checking the video out on out as as well. Checking it out on as well. Well my two topics, I'm gonna try to make them quick. Because these seem to be two things that are like kind of recent, and that is uh I guess the recent Texas ban on abortion or abortion ban. And the second topic I'll get into is this this continuous voters, voter suppression, voters' right bill that's going on in Texas and possibly across the country. I just want to say this first about the abortion ban. Uh, I guess it's Roe versus Wade and all this stuff. I'm still trying to figure that out exactly. What all that means in a sense. And what this bill, this ban actually entails, you get bits and pieces. But basically, you know, women are upset about it. And I guess uh, pro-lifers are upset about it. Or what is it? Pro-choice, I'm sorry. Pro-choice people are upset about it. Because the pro-choice pro people are the ones who want, who want to be able to have an abortion at will. Pretty much. Uh, so, let me say this. I have a t-shirt that says, if you can't afford it, abort it. And I say that because, you know, in my community and you know, across the country, there are a lot of children who are born to people who simply are just having sex. And they don't really want the children. They just do it to either try to get child support or they're trying to use it as a leverage to hurt the men who decide that they don't want them anymore. Probably didn't want them while they were having sex, but she... She acts as if this is not 2021 and, you know, and, and still think we're living back in 1721, 1821 with, and not during the times we live in with all the technology here that can prevent pregnancy. So she decides to, I guess, to try to keep a man, whatever the reason is, these women, these unmarried, single, never unmarried women are just having babies. And I'll say... Not because they're in a decent relationship, because there's money incentives involved. You know, child support, Section 8, food stamps, uh, welfare, uh, social pet on the back. Well, at least I didn't get an abortion. You know, all these incentives to be breeders for the state or the prison popular, the prison industrial industry, or a complex, that is. And so... They're, they're, they want the right to be able to, well, I don't want to be no mother right now, so they want the right to be able to just uh, abort it as, a, as probably in a lot of cases use um, as a form of birth control. But let me go back to why I have my shirt that says, if you can't afford it, abort it. And I mean that. If you can't afford it emotionally, if you can't afford it mentally, if you can't afford it, afford the baby economically. You can't afford the baby, what else? Spiritually. You might as well go ahead and don't bring that child here. Don't bring him here. Don't bring it. Stop bringing unwanted babies here. And then some of you some of you would rather abort it that, uh, as opposed to seeing if the father may want or the father's family or your own. So anyway, there's so many things that can be done, right? But my thing is if you can't afford to abort it, because I, I, I couldn't care either way. Uh, because I care about children. You're like, how do you care about children? Well, people have asked me that question. 
how do you care about children you don't have a problem with, abor with abortion well let me throw in some reality see two things I'm a mental health professional right no so it's master's level social work okay. and I've worked with mental health as well as substance abuse clients over the past 24 25 years all right See, people don't understand, this is where the selfishness of women come in and those so-called pro-choice and uh, pro-choice folks or pro-lifers. Hell, they get, they're about the same damn people. They both are getting cussed the same way. So pro-choice want the right to have an abortion whenever they feel like it, whenever they want to. It doesn't have to be a great reason. They just want to do it because, oh, I don't want to be a mother. Okay, those are the pro-choice. All right, the pro-lifers are the ones have the baby by any means necessary, and I don't care if it's out of rape or whatever. Just have the baby. That's that's the pro life of people that are really sick. And I'm gonna tell you what I let me tell you what I said to them one day, a group back years ago in Memphis. So, and the reason I say if you can't afford it, abort it. Because one thing about it, regardless of the you know, the, the the process that that goes into uh, the process of having an abortion. You know, in my mind, it's like, you know, I due to the fact that children can't pick their parents, you know, they, they can't they can't decide before coming here through some kind of angelical way or spiritual way or out of space, whatever, godly way, they can't pick their parents. Because if they could pick their parents, a whole lot of people would never ever become mothers or fathers. But see, since unborn can't choose decent people. They have to, it's almost like they're, it's a crap shoot. They said, well, shit, I hope I land on 7-Eleven because I get snake eyes. That's my ass. I got a, a, a teenage mama, a drug dealing daddy, or imprisoned mama, or imprisoned daddy, or, or I'm born to a couple that fight all the time, or they're poor, they live in the projects. Gun, guns are blazing, drugs, de drugs being dealt, dealed, gang violence, just pure hell hole. Or just plain neglectful people. And so it's just hard on unborn. So I'd rather for that unborn is possibly coming to a teenage mother and a teenage or jailbird, jailbird, drug, drug dealing gang member, street Negro, street man, rather be taken out in that little quick process or the process of an abortion than to be born and have to live through that psychological trauma. People don't understand that. See, in my mind, the abortion hurts more when they have to live through the through the child child abuse, the the hungry days and the poor days and the uh, the homeless days and the child rape and molestation, verbal assault, mama's frustration, daddy's disappearance. That shit is psychologically damaging to people. They, they go through all that shit as teenagers act out. If they still make it through their teen years, then, they, then they're just inappropriate, um, emotionally and mentally unbalanced adults. They may have to spend the rest of their adult lives in therapy. So what, if the child could have that choice, you're like, no, go ahead and take me out. I don't want to be a part of this shit. If you can't afford it, abort it. Then you have the pro-lifers who try to use religion and bullying and try to get on people's conscience and conscience to try to turn women away from abortion clinics. You know, I remember one time in Memphis, I was working overnight and I got off from work. Uh, probably worked Sunday night and got off on Monday night and I saw this anti-abortion rally uh, uh, not far from where I worked, right? And so I stopped the car, I pulled over and went to the rally just because I had never seen an anti-abortion rally. There was just so many people out there, white folks and Mainly white folks. There's a few few blacks out there, but they were trying to block the door to keep the women, shame the women from going into the building. And uh, and so I didn't know my curiosity. I just posed the question. I said, "Hey, um, should the women decide not to go ahead with the abortion? Which one of you is going to number one either adopt the baby or help her?" raise the child or help her financial, financially with that baby. How many of y'all gonna help babysit at least? You know you can hear a mouse piss on cotton when I pose that question to these so-called pro-lifers. See, both sides is about feeding one's own grandiose sense of self. They don't give a damn about children. They don't. 
because they did they make sure the children were born or put, being brought here under the correct circumstances. But they don't give a shit. Those pro-lifers are just as much full of shit as the pro-choice. So I'm like in the middle, I couldn't care less. I'm worried about children. See, when they get here, goddammit, are you going to take care of them? Are you going to make sure they're loved and cared for and, and protected and nurtured and caressed into to fine adults? Are you going to take time off to raise them? See, all this shit is political grandstanding, the pro-life and the pro-choice. Right now, I guess the pro-choice is they have more of the people in the Texas Senate or the Texas House well, they, they won this round, but next time they're going to go and pull it back and say, hey, when, when I guess it's become more democratic in that house, they're going to get a chance to lift the ban. They're going to have lawsuits and shit talking about women's rights. First of all, women, y'all shut the fuck up. Y'all, if y'all want abortions, goddamn it, pay for it out your purse. You know, before you go get those, those expensive purses, the weave, the makeup, the stilettos, why don't you pay for it? That's right. Pay for it your damn self. Stop, stop trying to get the, get the state of Texas or the United States government to pay for poor choices of sexual behavior. Cause that's all it's about. Oh my God, I didn't take the pill or, or whatever. I don't have any pills. I don't want to take any birth control. It makes me gain weight. What the hell you think pregnancy does, Hef? So, you, but you won't. I'll, but you want to put your sexual choices on our dime. People always say, shit, accountability in women is like kryptonite to Superman. And that's how I see it. All this fussing and fighting, nobody gives a damn about the children. And also in this band, I guess, you know, you have up until six weeks. After six weeks, they're saying it'll be illegal to get an abortion performed, I guess, in this state. In the surrounding counties or what have you. Hey, it is what it is. And I heard some lady say, what do you mean after no, after six weeks? A lot of women don't even know that they're pregnant in six weeks. What kind of bullshit is that? You mean y'all don't go to the doctor as often as y'all claim y'all do? And you know you've had unprotected sex? Or you know you had sex with a man that's not your husband? And you don't go at least within a net, that week or something and go take a, or two weeks, three weeks to take a pregnancy test? Talking about trifling, talking about lazy, god dog. It's weird. So ladies do not like to take responsibility at all. Not even for your own body, but of course I see these signs, my body, my choice. Man, ladies kill that noise. Kill that noise. Again, this whole equality thing, y'all don't want equality. You want non-accountability and superiority. You want men to give it to you. Hell, how about this? How about y'all, you know, instead of around here marching to my bands on abortion and shit, you know, why don't you just be responsible in your sexual behavior? And don't tell me about what well, he needs to wear a condom. How old is that? Y'all know damn well, men, that's all the option men have. Either condoms or anal. Or oral, but sometimes, you know, go a little further. So just, y'all got 21 forms of birth control. What the fuck you need to have an abortion for? Now, in the case of rape or, or medically, or it's becoming dangerous medically to the woman, I get it. And then, uh, a child getting molested or raped or whatever, yes, I get it. And it should be done immediately. But there's some people here as recently as Oklahoma letting 12-year-olds have babies. It's, it's weird. And CPS needs to go to the house. I think the, the guy and, and her parents were arrested or something. Y'all heard that case in, in recently in Oklahoma? This 24-year-old had his 12, pregnant 12-year-old 12 girlfriend, Mexican. That's just crazy. Whew. You know, I can go on and on about this, but, you know, people are playing political games with children. And I don't like that. You know, because children can't help themselves. Whether you're for abortion, you're full of shit, or you're against it, you're full of shit. You know, politically, all on TV with the signs. How about everybody just practice uh, mature, accountable sexual behavior? It's 2021. It's, isn't it interesting? I was just having this conversation online with some folks about child support and all that. So isn't it interesting in 2021 we have iPhone 30 or whatever the hell it is by now. Smartphones. We have... Uh, rem remote controlled like those little things that go up in the sky and shit you can have with cameras on them we have all this technology and yet people are still 
getting pregnant from casual sex? And all this technology out here? <laughs> Get out of here. Y'all mastered today's technology, but you still haven't mastered not getting pregnant in 2021. We just had civilians go off into space, pay their own way, and y'all still don't know about a goddamn birth control pill, a foam, a gel, a IUD, a diaphragm, a dental dam, or a female that, that female a condom. Y'all know anything about that, ladies? Always telling me, and wear a condom. Hell, y'all don't even like condoms. So stop saying it like it's something that um that should be said. Y'all don't even like condoms, ladies. Cut it out, y'all. And did y'all know, ladies? that he can't get any punani without your permission. I don't understand how y'all keep turning it around on men. A man can walk around with his tallywhacker hanging out of his pants. He can't stick it between closed legs. Y'all understand this? Why y'all keep talking like y'all are five-year-olds or, or 12 year old grown-ass people? That's why y'all never, they never should've took sex ed and PE out the goddamn schools. These grown-ass, dumb-ass people making ignorant statements like that. He need to wear a condom. You know, that's silly. He need to wear a condom. How about you use, how about you use one of those 21 or, or 30 forms of birth control, all of the options that you have? Y'all won't even use two of them. So stop telling him he need to wear a condom. He can't get no, no punani without permission. He can't go on you raw without permission. <laughs> He can't do any of that without your permission. So when is the that's gonna take that into accountability? And stop charging men heavily for using their penis. Stop penalizing men for using their penis for allowing women to make a profit from using their punani. It's the sexist and it's and it shows it just reeks of gender bias. Again, I'm sure there's some things in the abortion ban that's not very favorable. So tell these folks. However, we got how to be mature, and first, most importantly, how about we give a damn about the children for once? And everybody trying to use this, everybody always use the abortion conversation, the abortion argument, to try to get some kind of political um, clout. They don't give a damn about children. How about to be a mature adult, or tell your teenager, some of your parents tell your daughter, look, we're not, you're not making me a grandparent in no goddamn ninth grade. There's no freshman in college. There's no, the day after prom, you announce that you pray. We're not doing that. How about that? Be parents, goddammit. Try that on for size. Be a parent to these children out here. To these young adults. Teach them. And show, teach it, show, show your daughters where, goddammit, where, where they go to get her, I guess, her checkups. You know, teach them, teach them about their sexual health. So it doesn't make any sense for people still talking about, I'm against the boy. I said, shut up. You don't give a shit. Just us. We're pro-life. I want to be able to have the right to have an abortion because maybe some dude I ain't like, but I had sex with him anyway. You silly broad. But anyway, let me move on to this next one. I have to get my run on. All right, this voter suppression shit. Let me tell y'all something. I'm so over this. Because one thing I know, the United States Constitution guarantees you the right to vote. So it seemed to be for me looking from from me <laughs> paying attention to what people are arguing and fussing about and marching. How come this seems to be like a black thing? Aren't we Americans? Aren't we Americans? Are black people Americans? Or is it just white folks and the immigrants who have all these full rights? Wait a minute now, if y'all if y'all around here talking about voting rights, that means you are saying that black people like me we're not full Americans. Because white people aren't fighting about no damn voting rights. Asians and Hispanics and people from India, Pakistan, the Afghanis, they're not going to fight about no damn about any voters' rights. So why is it that whenever they talk about voters' rights, they're talking about black people all the time? <laughs> why do Democrats always bring that shit up? Y'all need to pay attention to who's making an ass out of you. They cannot take your voting rights away. What y'all talking about are the conveniences. Well, you know, they got to have ID. Who the fuck doesn't have ID in a civilized world in 2021? Well, you know, they won't let them drink water, I mean, give each other water during the line, in the line. Whoa. So I wonder how they were treated when our people fought, died, had dogs sick on them to get the right to vote. You know, damn well they had no conveniences in the line then, but they still voted. 
So why is it that we have all of these liberties, all of these rights as black people in 2021, we're still marching and fighting like we just got over here on a slave ship? It's the weirdest thing. What kind of Negro leaders are these? Oh yeah, they're the ones who are manipulating black people through these fake ass racial issues. Now there's some real issues, but they don't want to attack them the way Malcolm suggested we attack them. Because it doesn't make any money. See, they make money when they get all on TV and get, they get to be invited on these national TV shows talking about some shit that, that's so beyond us. Vote and get your ass up at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and get your ass out there and vote. You know what, if you, if you bring your own two bottles of water, bring your own thermos, goddammit, and why in the fuck don't you have ID? Now, I, I'm saying that because that seemed to be the stuff they're saying, this voter suppression. Because by law, if you work, they have to let you off of work to vote. So what is this damn, what, somebody, don't tell me, tell me the question I keep asking. Are they trying to take away the entire right to vote as an American citizen? That's not what I'm hearing. I'm hearing, well, they're making it uncomfortable or hard for people to vote. How the hell do they make it hard for people to vote? 7, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., get your ass down there. And those people, our people back 40, 50 years ago, they went rain, sleet, and snow. They went by car, cab, or walked. Why? We, we, we too up it now to do what we're supposed to do. We still see... My question is, are we full Americans? Are we still three-fifths? What's the goddamn argument about? Get up, go and get your voter's card. Uh, to the young men who claim about well, people who can't vote with no felonies, stop committing crimes and getting felonies. Or clear it up. You got plenty of time to clear it up. So we're playing games here. And y'all allowing these, these, these CNN-created so-called whacktivists or wokeivists from CNN and MSNBC to make an ass out of you. Y'all still following Jesse, I mean, uh, Al Sharpton? <laughs> Are y'all kidding me? Y'all still following those, uh, those NAACP, NAACP Negroes? Are y'all kidding me? <laughs> anyway, y'all might have to fill in the blanks. Uh, all I've been hearing about, they taking away with something that makes it, I guess, convenient for you. Or make it where you can just damn near have a barbecue in line. What the fuck y'all talking about? Because no other group has complained about no damn voters right except for black folks and why are we always used <laughs> by democrats and black folks to, so they can get clout off of our ignorance usually they come up with a racial issue and they use blacks why why are we still talking about some damn voting rights we already got the right to vote wait a minute hold on a minute now maybe that civil rights shit is what we were not supposed to be going for anyway how about human rights because that means that we're, that three fifths thing is, is still it still stands. That means we're not whole, a whole American because no other group complains about about having the right to vote. Not even immigrants who come over here voluntarily, who came, who started coming here like in the sixties and seventies, nineteen sixties and nineteen seventies. They call them Hispanics, Asians. No, they've been here, but they never tripped about no damn voting. They never said, oh, we don't have any voting rights. It's always black Americans. Y'all never find that to be strange? There's always black Americans who are talking about some damn voting. And that lets you know that civil rights bill was, was bullshit. And let me tell y'all something else that y'all keep slipping on. Your, your black leaders are not going to tell you these, these uh, CNN and MSNBC wokeivists or whacktivists. Do y'all know... Y'all don't see that it's a problem that only black people have to have their rights voted on every 25 years in the Senate, in the Congress, in the Senate. Y'all don't find a problem with that? But you still believe that we're all Americans? You gotta be kidding me. So y'all better, black people, stop thinking, start thinking and stop being so damn emotional and stop allowing other people to use you emotionally. And it's usually these white liberal Democrats and these black bootlicking Democrat who call themselves leaders. <laughs> Y'all cut it out. Be more intelligent than that, okay? If we're, if we're full Americans, we don't have to worry about no damn voter suppression. What is suppressing? Oh, because uh, you don't, you don't, a lot of people, you're saying that black folks, it affects, it mainly affects blacks and minorities. No, it ain't about no damn minorities. It's talking about black folks. Because we're the ones that's sitting around here. Acting like we don't have no have good sense. But anyway, I just wanted to put that on your mind. 
And when the Republicans come around and say they want to stop that thing for 25 years, what that means is everybody should have this voting rights, period. No one should be having their damn rights voted on every 25 years. Oh, them the Republicans, they, uh, they try to take our rights to vote. No, they try to make you a full American. You don't even know it. Every 25 years, we have to have our stuff recertified. That's stupid. No one's figured that out but me. All right, y'all be cool. I'll talk to y'all later. It's your boy Rico. These cars have got on my last damn nerves. Y'all be cool. Peace.